Welcome back to the steam room, everybody. Uh, special guest, special guest. That away, there's the special guest alert. Uh, as, as, <laughs> as Charles notifies us that, yes, someone is strolling into the steam room. And look at that towel. It has a Michigan State Spartan logo on there. Oh, it's, it's Draymond Green. And as we tell all of our guests, Draymond, please uh, keep the towel on. And uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for spending some time with us in the steam room. How are you? Absolutely, I'm I'm great, Ernie Chuck. Thanks for having me. Uh, hey, we're really we're excited. excited. Hey, we're excited too because uh, Friday and Saturday uh, you're going to be uh, filling in for Shaquille O'Neal on Inside the NBA. So Chuck and Kenny and I obviously looking forward to that. And you've already had some experience in that studio with the arena with Charles and and Kerry Champion and D. Wade. and um, So how's, how's the TV business treating you, man? Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, and like I said, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so excited about uh, Friday and Saturday. I had such a great time uh, when, last week when we were there for the arena. And I said to Chuck, I said, man, this is so much fun. Chuck said, man, this is boring. Wait till you come on, on on inside the NBA. Now that's when we have all the fun. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, you guys have done a great job over the years of building that show. And you know, when we were out there, I asked Tara. I said, "Is this Studio J? Like y'all y'all have made Studio J a real thing." I was excited to go see the studio. <laughs> hey, you know, Dre, this is kind of weird because of the pandemic. You've had all this time, but just asking. For the first time, I mean, you guys been in the finals four to five times. What's it like having nothing to do? Honestly, Chuck, for me, it's been great. Uh, you, you know, I've had a, a lot of fun spending time with my family. You know, we don't we don't get that time with our family uh, the the way we have over the last four months, and so that's been amazing for me. I've gotten to know my fiance better. I've gotten to know my kids better, you know, and so that's been amazing to me. But from a basketball standpoint, I got to be honest with you. I don't necessarily miss playing basketball because it's been such a long run that my body could use the break. But what I miss is competing at the highest level, you know, so the playoff basketball, the finals, playing in the finals, I miss that, just being able to compete at the highest level against the best players in the world. And obviously, as you know, when you go to the finals, everybody's watching, including the best basketball players in the world that's not in that game. And yeah. so that's, that's always the most fun time to me, and I miss that. Hey, in your opinion, Draymond, who's winning the bubble right now? I mean, as we speak, uh, we've got a few teams at 2-1 and one out of the West. you got Indiana 3-0, and oh, Toronto 2-0. and oh. um, Who's impressed you? Who's winning the uh, bubble? Well, well, Adam Silver is winning the bubble. <laughs> uh, with, you know, with, with what he's been able to pull off him and his team, you know, Michael Levine, I know he was extremely stressed out, a great friend, uh, just about trying to make this thing work. They're all winning the bubble. And, and so are we because it's, it's successful. And as players, it allows us to get back to work. And so everyone who's involved in the NBA is winning the bubble. But from a team standpoint, I got to say the Toronto Raptors. I mean, they've come out they're playing great basketball. They don't look like they've missed a beat. And, you know, I think they, they beat the Lakers the other day. Um, they beat, beat someone. Heat, yeah, beat the I Heat. Think. Like, those yeah. are two very good teams, one in which they'll probably play before they, before they can possibly get to the Eastern Conference Finals or the Finals, and one that they could possibly meet. And I know for us, we used to always speak about uh, sending a message to teams that we could possibly see in the playoffs or see soon down the road. So. They've done that. Uh, you got to get those guys a lot of credit. You know, I, I, I was going to talk about this. Uh, have you, because I've been totally shocked, I'm not going to lie, about the level of basketball that's being played. I thought there'd be some rust. I wasn't sure the guys were going to be into it. But have you been surprised? Because I've been pleasantly surprised how amazing the basketball's been. I, so here's the thing, Chuck. I agree with you 100%. I thought it would be extremely sloppy. I thought it would be like a pickup game. And guys are in there diving on the floor for loose balls, taking charge. I think uh, um, Derek White took five charges in one game. Like, you have guys really out there laying their bodies on the line. 
So I've been extremely surprised. What I will say in watching the games is you can see that guys aren't in tip-top shape, and yeah. that's just by watching, you know, if you know the defensive rotations in which you do. Um, you see a guy not make a rotation, but you can see that he's looking at it, but he's just not quite allowing them to get there. And so I think these eight games will pay dividends for guys moving into the playoff. But, man, they're playing some incredible basketball. I don't think I've seen a bad game yet. And, well, and I'm going to I'm, I'm I'm get you ready for the TNT gig right now. Give me a sleeper team in the East and the West. Let me make one of my ridiculous Chuck's bold predictions. Yeah, this will uh, be something that I'll write down on a Post-it note, and, and everyone will see it from here to eternity. Uh, so who, who, I, who I think uh, teams are going to sleep on coming out of the West is Houston. And, you know, Houston, they got Russ, they got James, who obviously can both go for 40 or 50 on any given night. They got a bunch of shooters, and they're going to create problems for people because they're playing this switching defense. And the first thing that people try to do, we saw it the other day with the Bucks. you try to pound the ball inside. You're not just going to run James Harden over on the, on, on the post. You're not just going to run P.J. Tucker over. And so – you know, I think a lot of teams will make that mistake, and Houston can be really sneaky. And out of the East, I think uh, Miami is a sneaky team out of the East. They play really hard. They got guys that's tied in together. They got my guy Andre over there, who we know during the finals <laughs> and playoffs is great. Uh, the only thing with the Heat is I think they, they struggle at times to find consistent scoring, but I think they're sleeper teams. They got a lot of talent. Right now, are you Steph and Clay? Getting ready for that second bubble right now? Second bubble? What's that? <laughs> what? The, the Gus Macker toilet bowl? That's what you want us to go play hey, Gus, Gus Macker. <laughs> Baby. Hey, seriously. Hey, listen. Uh, who's going to be favorite? Uh, are the Atlanta Hawks or the Warriors going to be favorite in that second bubble? It won't be the Warriors. I can guarantee you that one, Chuck. <laughs> I can guarantee you that one. So, Trey Young and his guys, they can have it. Yeah. They can have yeah, it. You, you, you know, I was when I heard them saying uh, some of the other teams want to put together a second bubble, and me and Dre were joking, Ernie. I, I, I asked him last week, I said, hey, when are you and Steph going to get to that second bubble? He said, hell no. No chance. No chance. I mean, hey. now at the end of the day, if if it came about and – you know, we had to go. I'm not going to opt out. You know, like, that. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. But I am strongly against Adam Silver and anyone else in the league office starting a second bubble. I mean, look at the teams who is, you know, it, it would be, uh, it'll be Atlanta who, you know, they, they haven't been good lately. The Cavaliers. The Cavs. Detroit. Detroit, Detroit and Chicago. Chicago. The Bulls. The, like, no one wants to see these teams. And by the way, they don't want to see us and Stephen Clay and playing either. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> I forget a little bit. Tell me about the voting thing you were working on. We talked about on the arena last week. Uh, so, um, more than a vote, uh, which is an which is, uh, organization that LeBron and, LeBron and Maverick Carter started. And it's, it's pretty much addressing – Everything voting, voter suppression, um, you know, teaching people how to vote, because I think, or teaching people the different ways to vote. I think one of the issues, especially in the, in the black community, is, is the education. You know, we're not educated on the voting system. And like I said on the arena, Chuck, I'll be 100% honest. I didn't know the difference between the electoral, well, I knew that there was a difference in between the electoral college and the, pop, and the popular vote. But I just didn't understand how Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, you know, all these people that won the popular vote but then lost the election. So immediately I, my, my thinking was, well, if these people won the popular vote and they, they, they still didn't win the presidency, my vote is the popular vote. So my, what you're telling me is my vote doesn't matter. And but yet you see when you're watching the election and my numbers could be off a little bit, maybe 267 or 280 or something like that, electoral college votes. And I could be way off, but it's something of that nature to win the election. And it never says, oh, well, something about the popular vote wins the election. And so 
I immediately turned to, my vote doesn't count. Why would I waste my time to go vote? They're not listening. It doesn't count. So, such and such won a popular vote, and they didn't win the election. And so educating people on that, educating um, everyone on the local elections. I've never voted in a local election. But, you know, coming out of this pandemic, I've, you, you see the importance of the local authority, your, your mayor, your governor, um, you know, your sheriff, all these different local spaces that has, or positions that has to be filled that we don't quite understand. And so really, I think the most important thing of more than the vote is to educate everyone. It's not just people in the black community, by the way, it's educating everyone on how you can vote and why you need to vote. You know, it, it was great when we had Stacey Abrams on because I had never filled out a census thing and she was telling us that like the black community loses out on a trillion dollars because they don't decide to fill out the census. I mean, mm -hmm. it was crazy the numbers she was throwing out there. And I had to go and dig back in the trash and find out my, say, and get my <laughs> census thing back out. Cause I'm like, they know I'm alive cause they keep taxing the hell out of me. So, <laughs> so, so like, you know like, what's hey, Look, Go ahead. You, know, you know what's crazy about that? And, and we, we spoke on it immediately as soon as she got off. We used to run from the census and, and when I was growing up. I mean, my grandmother lived up the street, and if they hit her house first, they would call us like, hey, the census people come and close the door, right? Or we would call them like, yo, we see the census people right up the street, close your door. And yet, like you said, we're losing trillions of dollars in our communities because we don't do that. But yeah. once again, that goes back to the education. You didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that. I don't think anyone else up there on our panel knew that information. And so no. that's, that's a lack of information in our community. And, you know, we're, we lack in so many resources. That is a huge reason why when you talk about losing trillions of dollars, yeah. that, that's, that's really big. And so that, I think that goes back to the education as well. And our school systems aren't teaching that. So where do you find the knowledge? Hey, hey Draymond, as a guy who's not playing in the bubble, but who is like uh, a lot of fans just watching what's going on on the floor, you know, there was, there was concern by some players who said, yeah, if we continue to play, it's going to take away from the social injustice focus and that kind of thing. Has that been how, – how have you perceived how the message is being put out? Uh, I think, you know, when, when you look at it from, I, I know that was a concern with a lot of guys. That was never really a concern of mine, although I wasn't going to the bubble, but just as a player, I never once thought if we start back playing, we're going to take away from uh, the social justice push. Because right. quite frankly, what, what does everyone say? Hey, you have a platform. You can use that platform to speak out. Well, what bigger platform than the NBA? and games going on to speak out on what you believe in. I mean, everyone's watching the NBA games right now. MLB can't keep a game going right now. Football hasn't started. So you kind of have this window of where everyone is watching. And anything that you want to speak about, I think it's very well known that our commissioner isn't going to stop you from speaking on anything that you believe in and actually will support anything that our players support that's, that's right. You know, and, and so – uh, you know, when you look at Black Lives Matter on the court and, you know, on T-shirts, it's everyone's still pushing it forward. And I, and I think that's important. Um, you know, I, we've seen a ton of interviews of where guys wouldn't speak and they said justice for Breonna, Breonna Taylor. I think that's now changed. You know, you still have guys saying justice for Breonna Taylor, but they're answering questions now. And I think, uh, you know, guys are starting to find that balance. And, you know, Chuck spoke a lot about that. And, and, you know, guys are really starting to find that balance, and it's great to see. Hey, welcome back to the Steam Room. Um, special, special guest. <laughs> there it is, the, the special guest alarm from Charles Barkley. And, boy, look at – this is an interesting towel. Don't you agree, Chuck? Sir, it has, like, I can see a Pistons logo and a, and a Heat logo, and I see a Magic logo, and I think that's, that's even a logo of um, – the University of Vermont and Castleton State College on that, wow. on that towel being sported by Stan Van Gundy. Stan, the rule is, 
uh, when you enter the steam room, uh, keep the towel on. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks for taking some time uh, from your schedule in the bubble. Um, so how's life down there in Orlando as you call games on TNT these days? Yeah, I, I mean, look, it, it's hard to complain here. You know, we're at a we're at a nice hotel, and you know, we go from here to the games. But but quite honestly, um, I don't think many of the Turner people are doing it. But it's it's legal from the league to head over to Disney Springs, where they've got restaurants and entertainment. And so we're not in anywhere near as restrictive an area as uh, as the players and coaches are. Coach, have, I've been uh, uh, I've been totally surprised about the level of basketball. These guys hadn't played in months and months and months. But I can say the guys look like they're busting their behind and they're competing. Have you been somewhat surprised at that so quickly? Yeah, very much so. And the level of conditioning. I thought it would take them a lot longer. You know, we did that Houston-Portland game last night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those are just two mainly offensive teams. And the level of intensity in that game and how they were getting after each other defensively was incredible. And, you know, all of those guards play big minutes. Um, I've been very surprised. I thought we would, what we'd be watching right now would be exhibition level basketball um, until we got to the first round of the playoffs, but it's come around a lot quicker than I thought. So give, a, give us a sleeper team in the East and West. Yeah, you know, in the East, it's hard because I'll admit, coming into the bubble, I was saying Philly. You know, they're a team we talked about early in the year. They have the talent level. You would think they should be able to contend with those top teams. Um, and I know things can change, but they just look very disjointed right now. You know, I've saw two of their scrimmages and then have watched their last two games here, and I'm not liking what I see. So. If I've got to go with a sleeper, I'll go with the Miami Heat. Like, you know those guys are going to compete and play at a high energy level. Um, I still have a tough time seeing anybody other than the top three teams in the East coming out, but they would be, they would be my pick. And, and in the West, um, my pick's going to be Denver. It's hard to call the number three seed a sleeper, but I don't hear anybody talking about them. Um, you know, and I think if they can get healthy, which they haven't been, but if they can get Murray and Harris back, uh, Michael Porter's another weapon for them. We know how good Jokic is. Uh, they had the Jeremy Grant pickup. They've got great depth. Um, I think they could be a sleeper team. So Stan, now that you're a TV guy, how much um, input and how much feedback are you getting from your brother uh, I mean, like, like when he when he watches your your telecast on TNT, does he text you during the game, after the game? What's what's going on? Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, he does. Uh, he does text me, and and you know he'll give me a few things here and there, and then down here in the bubble, we've been walking together every morning, so so we'll talk about it there some. But you know, I've solicited feedback from a lot of people early on. Mike Green gave me some feedback. Um, Scooter uh, gives me feedback. I'll get notes from him. And then, but the best has been uh, Ian Eagle because I'm working with him. And Ian, after every game, especially when he re-watches the broadcast, um, he'll be real encouraging, but he'll also always give me a couple of things that I can do better. Um, you know, I think the one thing, and, and Charles could vouch for this, the one thing about being in sports is that we're all used to getting a lot of criticism, and we don't look at it as a bad thing. I mean, you know, you get criticism from coaches. Even when I was coaching, you get criticism from the media, and you can use that feedback to get better. And so I've asked people to give me feedback, and they've been been very, very helpful. And if I keep getting that feedback, and keep working at it and stay in it about 20 or 25 years, so I'd be 80 or 85, I would have a chance to be decent. <laughs> Stan, this is something that um, I hope it's okay that we go there. Um, because recently, you and Jamel Hill had a little back and forth on social media. 
Um, Charles, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I think your input would be very valuable right here. That if you had your, if you had your choice, Chuckster, chocolate chip cookies or brownies? It, are they pot brownies or regular brownies? Uh, regular brownies. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a... Um, oh. I, I might have to go with the brownies, Ernie. There you go, Stan. Yeah, Victory. I might have to go with the brownies. Gee, thank you. Thank you, Charles. But, but here's the thing, Ernie. Like, Jamel and I agree on most things, but it wasn't even... You know, her favoring chocolate chip cookies, I could have gone with, but I really thought the way she wrote it was disrespectful to brownies. Now, if you say they're both great, but I prefer chocolate chip cookies, okay, I'll buy yeah. that. But she just made it like it was clear cut, like brownies didn't belong on the same table with the chocolate. I couldn't accept that. Now, Jamel was stronger in her opinion because – she tweeted back at me that this was a hill she was willing to die on, you know, for, for that. And I certainly wasn't that strong about it one way or another. So I give her the victory. Hey, Ernie, you know, in fairness to me, uh, in, I in only, fairness to you. Yeah, no, I'm saying I only eat two types of cookies, white, white macadamia nuts and oatmeal raisins. I'm not a big chocolate chip fan, but – Oatmeal raisin and white macadamia nuts. I'm willing to die on the hill for those white macadamia nut cookies. Yeah, I am. I, that's the hill I'm willing to die on for those cookies. How about the? How about I think the underrated butterscotch brownie? No, no, come on, Ernie. Ernie, you I can only have to, no, 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 Ernie, you can, no, no. That's not Ernie. That's not even a thing. I don't think. Oh, Ernie, it, it we're is. Talking, Ernie, we're talking MVP candidates, and you're talking a a dessert that's trying to get into somebody's rotation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 let me tell you something. I had, actually, I don't think I've ever had that, Ernie. A butterscotch brownie? There are a couple of places uh, around Major League Baseball where that's like a, uh, in, the press, in the press lounge, somebody yeah. will crack those out, and they're, they're really good. Um, what's your go-to What's your go-to candy bar? Oh, Reese's and Snickers. I'm a big Reese's guy. I was going to say my two are, are Reese's and Nestle's Crunch for me. That's my two. See, and that's fine. And I, you know, I'm, I used to be a Three Musketeers guy. And then, but I'm really more, if, if it came down to one candy bar I could have, it'd be a Heath bar. Oh, that's a not a bad call. That's not, not a bad, bad call, call, but Ernie, there's nothing better than a cold Reese's. I'm not going to lie. You but, put it in the fridge but, for a few minutes, you can't go wrong with a cold Reese's. But Heath no, bars are very versatile, too. You can, you can like, have a bowl of vanilla ice cream and get out a, something and, and mash up a, a nice Heath bar and pour that on top of that bad boy. It's not bad. No, that's not a bad. good call. That's a much better call than the butterscotch brownie. Much yeah, better. okay. I, I, I feel really bad about even bringing up butterscotch brownie. It's my, yeah. That's my bad. Back here on the steam room, the legendary uh, longtime producer of Inside the NBA, um, Tim Kiley, looking like uh, an aging Rowdy Gaines. Rowdy as Gaines, a, what a great he, name of Tim Paz. Auburn's the, number one athlete. You got uh, the uh, speedo uh, hat. You got the goggles. What is uh, – there must be something behind this. Ernie, it's a theme. Uh -oh. It's a theme. We going swimming or something? No, Chuck, I know how much you love the beach and water and all that sort of stuff and how often you go in the water, which is never. But do you know what week it is this week? Shark week. Yes. Do you watch? No, but I will admit <laughs> this. That the, the 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 commercials with Mike Tyson are awesome. I've seen like three or four of them, and they are awesome. So I I I don't. Uh, Shaq did it one year, didn't he? He's he already did it. He's doing it again. You so know that would Mike be. Tyson, you know, he, Shaq's got a show to watch. You know he always talks about swimming with sharks. 
I'm not going to lie, and I'm not an evil person. I would love to see his fat ass get eaten by a shark. Now, we, <laughs> we'd cry on TV, but it would be hilarious. We all cried <laughs> that he got eaten by a shark, but probably, y'all know, we'd be laughing behind closed doors. But, Chuck, I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you mean the guy who wants us to set him on fire? Yeah, oh. I know. He wants to be set on fire. But you know what? That would be such a shack thing to do, to get eaten by a shark. Hi, this is Patty from Missouri. After watching all the news on the pandemic and going into forced retirement, I ended up into a, kind of a funk for about three weeks until I told myself to get my ass out of bed and get it moving. So now I'm walking. Then I started listening to podcasts, and I found Steam Room, and I loved it. Became a steamer. It's a great thing to listen to as I walk along. I'm with Charles with social media. I don't do any of it. I don't have a question, but just wanted to say I've really enjoyed listening to you. You make my day. Bye. Wow. That's awesome. I wish we had Patty, her name. Patty, Patty, I'm oh, not it is Patty. This. Patty from Missouri. Yeah. Patty from Missouri, number one. I'm not just saying this. You made our day because that's when we started this thing, I had no idea what it was. And I have enjoyed every moment of it. I've enjoyed our guests. And we just want to be two fools who, for an hour a week, have some fun and interview amazing people. You know, and the one thing that I've had people come to me, they says, I love the fact that you guys don't talk about sports. I mean, and, and to me, that's what we wanted to do. We talk enough about sports in our everyday life. I love the fact that we've had some amazing guests. And Patty, I really appreciate you taking the time to reach out. And when you're taking your walk, turn on the steam room. We're going to make sure it's fun for you. I promise you that always. That's it's well said there, Chuckster and Patty. That it does. It just means the world that uh, that we would uh, be able, uh, in our own way, uh, just to kind of make make things uh, a little better. And I think that's the way we approach our inside the NBA show too. That you know maybe it's an escape for two or three hours for you to watch hoop and and uh, and let us you know talk hoop and make you laugh. It's good. Laughing is a great thing. And, uh, yes, especially and nowadays. Over.